Go Jim. Okay, so goblets, uh, slab construction. I had a couple of different ones that we have, like this guy here. Uh, let's see down inside is a little bit more of, of just a little, a little short one. This one as well. Uh, on those, this one I actually have a pattern for um, that a lot of students can use when they're making this particular project. Um, these ones here I do not have patterns for. I just kind of made them up as I went along. So you you can do the same on those uh, when you're making up your goblets. Um, but let's show you how to make something kind of like this one. It has a couple of different parts when we're looking at it. It has kind of the, the body of the, of the, the, I guess the cup part of it. it. has a little bit of a stem part that comes down here, this additional support. This is also a little bit of additional support here um, because when it connects, it, it's kind of a fragile area. And then we have the foot in and of itself. So there's about four different pieces that we add together to get to this, uh, this stage. Um, let's go ahead and clear some room and roll out some slabs and uh, get ourselves a going here. Hopefully, I can find space for everything. The desk is becoming a little cluttered. Hopefully, I don't kick that over. Now, there's a couple different ways you can you can roll out slabs. We've done the thing with the the throwing of the slab technique, right? Uh, we did that last time uh, with the the balloon project. Um, we can also um, use the slab roller as an initial step. The slab roller is not going to be able to roll things quite as thin as, as we want to on that one. Let's see, Isaac. Sorry for the break on that one. Okay, here's the deal. Remember, if you guys remember from the first time, if you do get debris on your uh, rolling pins uh, from other classes, just take it and scrape it off, either with a fettling knife, a needle tool, that sort of a thing. That way you don't get dents and dimples and, and that sort of a thing in your, in your project. Um, and so that, that's, that's kind of a deal. So a rolling pin's a pretty good tool. A lot of times I kind of pre-flatten a little bit so it's just a little bit a little bit thinner. If you're going to use the slab roller as an initial step too, you want to make sure that it's, it's no thicker than this when you start out on a slab roller. Um, let's go ahead and roll this out. You'll need a cloth on your table. Um, you probably noticed I got one here. That way it doesn't stick. When you're rolling out the slabs, um, it, it pushes down and it kind of sticks. So you need to always pry it up and kind of release it so it can roll out more. Uh, you can also rotate them, turn them over, whatever you think. Now in the past, a quarter of an inch is um, kind of the rule of what it, what we're doing. But for this particular project, a quarter of an inch is too thick. It makes them look really heavy and clunky. If you'll notice, like on the edge of these things, on the rim, they're, they're pretty thin uh, on, on the rim. And so that's what we're looking for as well. So we're looking maybe an eighth of an inch uh, on those. Maybe a little thicker, but not too much more on those. Okay. When you do set the slab back down, make sure that the um, cloth is not bunched up, that it's straight and flat, and it will work out better for you. I don't know if this will be enough clay. We'll find out pretty darn fast. Okay, that's getting a little thinner. I want it thinner than that, though, too. Okay, how are we doing? I think that's got to be pretty pretty close. So about about that thick is what we're looking for. That that looks like a good thickness about there. Okay. All right, like I said, I have some templates that you can use on these ones, and I said there are four pieces. I got one, I got two. I have a couple of different templates, but this, this is up to you. You can kind of make your own as well on that. Uh, so this is the big body part here. That's the biggest piece, so I probably need to cut it out first. And so just lay the template down on, on the piece and using either a needle tool or a, or a fettling knife or something like that, you can just cut around the edges. Now this does not have to be an exact, exact fit on this one. Uh, close is, is sufficient. 
Okay, so there's piece number one that I'm going to use. And so that's going to be the body. That seems uh, still a little bit thick. Okay, next piece I have is this one. This one is going to be the, the, uh, the leafy part, this part right here uh, that we're going to do. So I just cut out the body. This is going to be the leafy part. And... We'll see how much room we have left. Okay. So that's my leafy part. That over there. Looks like I might need to squish and roll some more stuff out. I'm going to take this, squish it together, and then wedge it a little bit. The wedging will help remove some of the air bubbles out of the out of the clay. Then we're just going to squish it down flat again. Need those, need those two pieces. So I had enough clay, but just not in the right spots. Now, when you're rolling it out, um, if you see some spots that kind of are, are little lumps and they kind of move and wiggle a little bit, but then when you, they, you, they roll over them, they don't really disappear. That probably means you need to have an air bubble in there. And if that's the case, you need to stab it. Kill it uh, with a needle tool. Okay, so then this one, this is the base that we have. which is basically a circle with a piece of the pie cut out. And so when you put it together, it'll form a cone. That's the idea. Okay, that one can go over there. Now this one is the only one that is a little off. Initially when I made it, um, it seemed to be about the right size, but it's actually about this short. Okay, so if when you're making this one, you make your cuts, a little bit longer than what it is, it would probably work out better for you. So, you know, maybe cut it a little longer like that and you're, you're okay. If you forget, you can just roll that out a little bit more and then it'll work for you. Now this is just scrap clay and so these are the four pieces that I need uh, to create this this project. Now the edges on these are really really rough now um, and we're gonna have to take care of that and address those because that's the main failing I, I see when people try to do this assignment is the those rough edges. Okay so here's here's problem number one. This is a rough edge right here and there's a couple of different ways to do it. This is the easiest way. If you just take your finger along the edge like that and you just kinda gradually smooth it um, and make it so it's more of a rounded edge that will work for you then flip it over do the same thing over here get these little little piece over here and then just take your finger and run it along the edge so it becomes rounded becomes smooth and that's easier to do before you actually make the mug part of it here on that so that makes it a nice smooth edge kind of liking that so I think I think this one was just a little bit um, thicker than what I wanted. So I'm gonna make a couple of rolls on this one, make it a little bit thinner. It could make it some crazy shapes too uh, on that as well. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. And we have the rounded edge up top. That's gonna work out well. Now, if you'll remember when we made slab mugs, uh, made these guys here, is we made a tube. Uh, as the initial stage, we put a base on it, then we put a handle on it, put some extra features on it. This is going to follow the same sort of thing. This is going to be our tube right here. And let's so let's make it into the tube first. Uh, get some slip going. And a scratchy, scratchy tool on that. So on if, if you're going to be scratching the edges, remember to make them, uh, if 
you want a, a hidden seam, I don't, I'm just going to have an overlapping seam because it's quicker and a little bit easier. And I, I don't know, I kind of like the overlapping seams. So you do scoring on opposite sides. Okay, so I scored this side, and so on this one over here, I need to score on this side. Opposite sides with, with scoring for making a tube on an overlapping seam. I'll show you a little bit about hidden seams in, in just a bit on those. And then, as I said before, I needed a brush. There we go, hold on. Ah. And so slip. This is the one side. And just some, enough slip so it starts to dissolve. Now I gotta kinda hold it up. Because if I set down uh, completely, then I don't get any slip on this. So this is just putting slip on that other side. Now if you need somebody to help you, you know, holding up the stuff so it works out really cool, we can do that as well. Okay, so from here, we're just going to take it and we're going to round it. Just kind of fold it around like this. Once it gets to that stage, it will probably stand up on its own. Now, if your clay is really dry, uh, when you go to round this, this portion of it down here, it's, it's going to crack on you. And so all I'm doing is like doing up a zipper a little bit, right? You start at one, one side and then you just kind of press it down and press it together. And so, like that. And now you can come in and just uh, make sure this upper edge is same. And then just pinch to press those together. Okay. Now, my fingers will only go down about this far, and then my hand's too fat. What you can do then is you can take and you stick the, the, the handle of an object down in there, like this Fetley knife. And then you can press that together. Remember, you needed um, really you need uh, three things to make sure something's going to stay um, when you when you glue them together: scoring, slipping, and pressure. And so we need to have the pressure. And so that was that was a good tool just to stick it inside uh, and work with that. Okay, so now I have the base body of of the the mug or the the goblet that I'm going to use. And I will want it eventually. I want it rounded and, and that sort of a thing too. Okay, so since this is going to be a container, we need to put a cap on the end of that. If you just take, you can just take a ball of clay like this and just squish it a little bit and then, then come in and score it like that. And then this one, you can just, I'm just going to score the whole, the whole side like that. Slip. Remember, we need what, what three things? We needed... Uh, scoring, slipping, and then pressure. And so I can just kind of push this in and down like that. And so that's going to seal it around so um, it, it will work like a goblet. So it'll actually hold uh, liquid on those. Okay, so that was that step. Next one is, is going to be this guy, I think, is what I wanted. Got to remember which one. Okay. This guy is going to be the base. It also has the issue of having a sharp edge. And so I'm just going to take and I'm going to smooth out that sharp edge just like I did before, getting little bits of junks of clay. Push in at about a 45 degree angle. It'll make it good and smooth for you. And so that's one side. Flip it over. Do the same thing on the other side. I think and I wanted this... This one is not the one I'm going to put on next. I think I wanted the leafy part next. No matter. All right. For this one, would it be a different design? That one, yeah, that one, the, the, the flattened goblet. If you guys are interested in something like this, then notice the base is the same, the support is the same on each of theirs. So it's like you have the base and then you have a fatter base for the top part on that. And so that's a little bit of a ways of doing that one. So good question. Thank you. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this one, then I'm going to actually set it to the side on those for the base. Um, if, here's the hidden seam thing. If you don't like the visual seam like we have right here, 
Uh, you can take and make a hidden seam, and doing that, you need to cut at an angle like this. And then if you keep the tool in the same direction and cut this one in an angle, when you put them together, they'll overlap because I'm going to take them like this and I'm going to spin them and that way they can overlap. Okay, scoring, right? So scoring the edges. I figured I'd make this one first so I can kind of shape it then let it start to form up a little bit. Flip it over. So there's the scoring, slipping. I actually saw this this design was in a, one of the magazines that we got, and I thought, oh, that's cool. I wonder if I can make that, and so I did. Okay, and so now we're going to do the same thing, a little bit of a zipper effect, folding it down like that. And then, now that we've got the zipper zipped, a little bit of pressure to close it. Like that. And now you have a hidden seam, right? And we can do the same thing here, just kind of smoothing that side. And if you let it sit a little bit, you'll probably be okay. Because this is going to be our base, right? Now, if you're making one of those other goblets, if you made a bigger circle, and then you have this sort of a thing. That could be the bowl part of it with a, with a stem down it. Um, the same sort of an idea, making a, two of these little little uh, cone-shaped guys on that. So I'm going to let this sit off, off to the side for a minute. I need this guy, and that one is a little thick. I also want to put a design on it. Let me find a cool pattern real quick. Okay, here's a cool pattern. I don't know where Mr. Moffat acquired this, but it, it's really cool on that. It has this really ziggity zaggity thing going on here, and I just find that it works really good for this thing. So I'm just going to pick a spot, and I'm going to put this piece on there, and then I'm just going to roll it so it presses down into the, the pattern. This is also making it thinner. Now because this is plaster, I should be able to peel it up. And then I have this cool wavy design. I think it works really good for this particular um, particular unit there. Okay, so there's that piece. Set that down underneath. And by chance, when I rolled that out, it also made my edges pretty smooth as well. I don't really have to go around the edges and have them, you know, all ready to go. Okay, so I'm gonna. This one's gonna be another overlapping. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna roll it this way, and this part is gonna overlap on this part. So, knowing that, I need to scratch this edge. Now this one's not a real cone sort of a shape, so we got we got to deal with it a little bit. Remember, if your clay breaks. When you're doing these phases on this one, if, when you're rolling it around, it, it breaks or cracks. It's probably a little bit too dry. You might want to get some other other stuff that's just a little bit more, more moist. This is still a soft slab construction. You know, I'm not waiting for the slabs to become really, really hard. It is a soft slab construction. Okay, and so then this one I'm making another cone shape. And then I can just stick my finger in here and gently press that down so you can see the the slip start to squish out a little bit that's kind of a good thing and so then this is the leaf part you just slide it on yep yeah that's gonna just gonna slide it on the brilliant observation so this part is gonna go here and then I'm take this part and we're just gonna slide it on something like that which is pretty cool and I usually alternate the seam so that this seam is in the back and then this seam is on the opposite side of that I'm gonna set it up this way for just a second and for scoring on this one I'm just gonna reach inside here and and put some scratch marks on the inside uh, as far down as I can I guess 
This probably works better with a needle tool or something or a, this sort of a thing. And so I'm just going to scratch the inside down below. And I'm going to kind of guess about how far down it is. And so those are the scratch marks. Remember, need to those three things. The other thing we need now is I need, uh, I guessed that it's about right here somewhere. Is about how far down that's sticking. And the cool thing is it doesn't really matter because I know that this whole bottom part is going to be stuck inside that, that other piece. And so that's a, that's a good thing. So I can just scratch that and with careless abandon. Okay. So then here, slip, 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 slip. On the bottom. And we're ready to go. Now I didn't put any slip in here. I think I'm going to be okay without that. There's There was plenty in here. And then you just shove it in there like that. And push it down. Now we can come back and like pull this out a little bit so that you have more of a of a leaf portion. Pull this away from the body. Be careful because they, they will try to crack a little bit on you, but you can just take and, and, and pull it away. That's kind of a good thing. Now it's still working on the upside down portion of this one. From here I'm do a little bit of shaping so it's a little bit straighter on those. Now this you will dry it upside down is is the plan. Hopefully you can see on, on that. Now we can come back to this guy. Right? This one is just waiting in the wings. And so this portion right here, let's move this to the side for just a second. This one is going to go here and I'm just going to scratch the, the tip of the cone here like that. So it stays. Remember, scoring, slipping, and pressure. Now on here, just inside, on these ones, I'm just going to take and I'm going to scratch those surfaces as well on the side. Notice I'm not necessarily scratching the bottom. That's not going to be needful on this one. Okay, so let's get the slip again. Blop, blop, blop. And we can go in here, a little bit of slip. Okay, so then this part is going to go onto this part, like that. And I'm just going to press that down a little bit. And here's kind of a deal. I'm going to take and I'm going to poke a hole right in the side here like this. And I'm going to push that down. So I'm pushing the sides like that. Oh, I can't see inside. Let's push inside a little bit. Like this. So you're pushing the clay down against the sides, kind of like, oh, let's see, which way do we tilt? So we can see the camera, ah, oh, right that way. And so you're, you're pushing this clay down here, you're, you put a hole in it, and that's where the pressure comes in, and that should make it stay. Plus, when we put that cap on it like that, when we put that piece on it, what happened is we created an air pocket, right? And so by pushing this clay to the side, we've opened up that air pocket so there's no air in there, which is a good thing. And so from here, I can look at it sideways, like it's sitting on the counter like this, right? And so what I do when it's flat on the surface here, I can make and look at this one so to make sure it's flat as well. I mean, if it's leaning sideways or something like that, I can, I can make some of the corrections, okay? And so that's putting the base on it. Now, we have the, the one piece over here, right? We talked about this being our, our support piece on that. And so I'm going to make it smooth as well just by smoothing the inside, flip it, get this one going around here like that, oh, I jabbed it, cool, and then the outside as well, outside edge, just smooth it gently, now if you, if I were to roll that out, again, then it would also it would kind of smooth it automatically, but I still have this as a cut edge. Anytime you have a cut edge, it's sharp, and you need to have it uh, smoothed out a little bit, like that. Okay, now this piece is going to wrap around kind of like this, okay? It's going to be a little bit of a collar, okay, like that, and it's going to be wrapped around 
Let's see if I can support this so we can see what I'm doing here. It's going to be wrapped around this part right here so it can be a little extra support. Okay. Now this one, when we put this together, um, this is the thin part and it just has a little bit of clay supporting that. So you can see that it moves quite a bit. And so we want to give that more support so it's not a fragile area. So once again, upside down. On this project, you work on it upside down a lot uh, with those. And so then this part here is going to need to go around that. So let's, let's score this part first. So score on this side and then score a little bit on this side. All this will be covered up. Now you got to create a little, little bit. and be sensitive to the surface. Okay, so I have that scored. I gotta turn it upside down again. Then this side, I can just come on this one and just score the whole inside of it like this. Because it's, it's going to attach to it and make it thicker, right? And then I'm gonna put a generous amount of slip on here. This is the big band-aid. This is going to wrap around the thing. Um, I can also put a little bit of the slip in here. Now you can be generous with the slip in this area because once again, if um, when I put that piece on, I could be trapping some air. So if you have a little bit more slip, it's going to work okay. Okay, this is going to be upside down. I'm not sure you guys are going to see this, but I'm just going to take this piece here. I'm going to wrap it around like that, bring it on in, and then just fold it around. Start at one side, let's rotate it over. Start at one side like that, and then you can just take it and wrap it around the piece like that. And then the pressure, you can come like this and just put in a little bit of pressure so it attaches. and a little bit of pressure here, like that. And so now I have the base of all the pieces put together. And we're ready to go. Now it's still fragile, okay? It still has that, that, that real narrow neck. And if I, if I set it like this to dry, it's gonna put a lot of pressure on that base and it's probably gonna flatten it out, okay? So in order for this thing to dry, I gotta dry it this way. I have to dry it upside down. But first, I want to take and I want to do a little bit with this, um, this goblet part. Now you can keep your straight like that. A lot of times I like, like them to bulge out a little bit so it makes it look more like a, a, a bulbous flowery sort of thing. So I just take here and pushing out on the inside with my fingers like that. You can make it more of a rounded shape so it bulges out just a little bit rather than straight. Which is kind of cool. That's a little bit of a thing. And so that's kind of that sort of a look to it, which is kind of cool. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it this way. And I'm going to make sure that this part right here is rounded as I look at it because when I turn it upside down to dry, that's going to be an issue. I can also come in, if I want, I can flare this out just a little bit, which I think I'm also going to do just by pushing it out on the outside edge. Okay, so now it looks rounded. Now I can take it. I can have it upside down to dry. From here, I'm going to look across this way so I can see if it's flat. Like right now, this side is down. And so from here, I can take and I can just rotate it up like that. If you take like a flat surface, you can set it on it like this. Sometimes that makes it easier to see if your piece is sitting on it flat. Let's see if I can rotate it sideways. So putting a, a board or something on it like this you can see if it's at an angle or if it's sideways or something like that because we do want it to dry um, upside down. 
Now from here on, on the stuff, that's your basic construction. There's some other things I've done. I put this little, uh, I don't know, ball bearing, bulby thing right here. That's kind of a cool deal if you want. I've also pressed in some designs, sometimes along the edge here, um, taking the, the um, end of a paintbrush actually and just pushing those in to create some sort of added design around the edge. In times past, I put a coil on the bottom here uh, if you wanted to do that or push in some designs along those edges as well. See how this one also has that flared out, flared out edge and then a rounded portion here as well. Now that's the basic construction for these um, goblets. I would like you to make two of them uh, with, uh, with those. Uh, hopefully be able to share with a friend. You're going to celebrate uh, the senior prom or something like that. And so your girl's going to have a handmade goblet. Pour your sparkling cider of some sort uh, that you have. And you can toast to the victory of graduation. Um, as it is getting closer and closer. And so I do want you to make two just because um, repetition on, on making something is really how you learn to make it. Like the first one may be good, but I assume the second one will be even better. And so that's one of the reasons why I have people make two things that, on those. So you have goblet one, you have goblet two uh, on these sort of things. Soft slab construction, and it is a little complicated, okay? It's not, not quite as simple as the other ones, but, but bear with me, be patient. Um, it should work out pretty good for you. All right.